Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I'm going to walk you through the creation of this miniature gothic four-poster bed. This project was made using the Cricut Maker and lots and lots of layers of chipboard and cardstock. If you're interested in building your own gothic four-poster bed, you can purchase the files, if you'd like, from my shop. There's a link in the description. This SVG bundle comes complete with 13 separate SVG files and complete written instructions. In this video, we'll go over all of the construction details, beginning with adhesives. I'm using Zig Two-Way Adhesive and Fabri-Tac and Starbond Superfast Thin Superglue. As always, when working with super glues, make sure that you have adequate ventilation and that you follow all the safety precautions. Okay, so let's get started. Once you've cut all of the SVG files, it's time to begin with the simplest part of the project, which is to laminate together these four panels, which form the mattress support. For this, I'll be using Fabri-Tac, an old gift card, so that I can spread the adhesive relatively evenly across the surface. And then I will layer one piece on top of the other, being very careful to align all of the notches at the boundaries of each panel. These are crucial to the final construction of the piece, so taking care that this is as accurate as possible is super helpful in the long run. Once all four panels of the mattress support have been laminated together, make sure that they're pressed firmly in place and set the piece aside to cure. Next, we're going to be creating these coffering panels that go on either side of the canopy. To glue these together, I'm reaching for Zig Two-Way Adhesive. It's easy to apply with this broad chisel tip and it goes on very smoothly and easily. I really like it. Again, aligning the pieces so that they match up as close to perfect as possible is a great help in the long run. Once you've glued two of these beautiful little grill works together, repeat the same procedure for the other two. We'll be layering them all together in a later step. Once you've completed layering together the two coffering panels, it's time to harden the surface of both of them with super glue. This is a slightly tedious but very simple procedure. You just apply super glue to the surface and then spread it out using an old gift card. When I'm working with super glue, I prefer to do the work on these Teflon coated craft sheets. That makes it possible to quickly and easily peel each piece away from the surface. Next, it's time to prepare the canopy base layer. This will be sandwiched between these two canopy coffering grills. Now, I want to add a decorative paint treatment to this flimsy chipboard. And in order to do that, I'm going to create a ground on the surface by applying PVA glue and just smoothing it out with a piece of sponge and following that up with an application of joint compound. I use a palette knife to apply this across the entire surface and smooth it out to a roughly consistent thickness. Using a heat tool, I speed up the drying process and then I flip the piece over and repeat the glue, then the joint compound on the other side. Once this has dried thoroughly, I sand away any irregularities with a sanding sponge and then wipe the surface clean. Unlike modern gessos, this layer of joint compound and glue will provide a very porous surface for this thin acrylic craft paint 
to bond to. The paint is just laid directly onto the surface of the joint compound and then dried with a heat tool. To evoke the feeling of stylized medieval paintings, I'm going to add a small star shape in the center of each of these medallion shapes created by the coffering panels. And to act as a guide, I'm placing tiny dots on all four sides of these apertures using a white pen. Now I'll be applying adhesive size. This is a thin liquid glue traditionally used in the gilding process. To adapt it for use with a stamp, I'm saturating this piece of sponge and then using it as a temporary stamp pad so that I can pick up a moderate amount of the liquid size on the surface of the stamp and then do my best to repeat this pattern in as regular a fashion as I'm capable of. Once the size has been applied, it needs to cure. And while I'm waiting for that to cure, I'll now apply that same liquid size to the surface of the canopy coffering panels. Only one surface needs to have gilding applied, so the size only has to go on the upper surface. Now these pieces need to cure for half an hour before we can apply metal leaf. I'll be using this Mona Lisa composition fake gold leaf. And I love gold leaf, but I'm not an expert gilder by any means. I just put down the size, let it cure, press the leaf in place, and then burnish it away with my fingers or a brush or a smooth cloth. In this case, I'm using an old stencil brush. It works pretty well to remove most of the leaf. And then I just wipe down the surface with a soft cloth. It's time to repeat the pattern on the other side. Now I'm applying the metal leaf to the coffering panels. Again, not with a great deal of elegance, but we're getting the job done. I press it in place and then I burnish it against the surface using a soft cloth and then I use a harsh brush to remove most of the excess leaf. Now we have a double sided panel that will be sandwiched between the two coffering panels and I'll just cover up all those little white dots with the same blue paint. I'm gluing the layers together with Zig two-way glue, taking care to line everything up. Now I'll put some heavy weights on top and allow this to cure. Next, it's time to begin layering all of the pieces of chipboard that make up the support for the four poster bed. I'm going to begin by layering together the two chipboard headboard support panels. Once I've applied the adhesive, I turn the piece around so that I can visually align all of those pointy bits at the upper decorative edge. Once I'm confident that we're on track, I add additional adhesive at the bottom of the panel and press that in place. The main concern with this process is to keep the alignment as close to perfect as possible so that the construction slots and tabs will fit properly together once everything's been layered. Next up, it's time to layer together the footboard support panels. These two are created from lightweight chipboard. And again, my main concern here is to retain alignment to the best of my ability. Okay, now we have the headboard and the footboard supports in place. It's time to work on the side rails. Applying adhesive, lining everything up as carefully as I can, and thank goodness there's a little bit of working time with the Zig two-way glue because I don't get it right the first time and it's very helpful to be able to slide things into place. 
This mattress support panel has had time to cure, and so now I'm going to harden the surface of it using my favorite super glue, which has become Starbond. I just recently discovered this brand and I love it so much. I don't think I will ever go back to using Dollar Tree or Harbor Freight super glue ever again. Once the top and bottom of the panel have been hardened, I'm taking care to apply additional super glue along the exposed edges where all of these construction tabs are located. Any drips just get worked into the surface with the gift card. This process helps it to disperse and cure almost immediately. Now I'm going to harden the surface of both of the side rail support panels. Again, I really can't stress enough that you need adequate ventilation when you're working with super glue like this. It does give off fumes and there's quite a bit of heat generated when it begins to kick. So take care not to burn yourself and make sure you're not breathing these fumes. But just look at the cool surface that it creates as we harden this cheap chipboard. I really love the intense mottled effect. It does remind me of ancient wood and it definitely feels like wood by the time it cures. It's amazing what hardening does to chipboard and even to cardstock. Okay, so now that we've hardened all of these components, we need to smooth them out. So grab a sanding sponge or some sandpaper or even just an emery board or two. It really does help to have some needle files on hand because they can help you clean up these very sharp little construction tabs and slots and the decorative pointy bits at the top and bottom. Any slight misalignment that may have occurred whilst layering together the chipboard needs to be corrected by filing and sanding at this point. Otherwise, it's not going to fit together. So make sure you pause and do test dry fits. If for some reason the tabs don't want to fit into the slots, sand away until they do. All that means is that there's been some slight misalignment during the layering process because they are sized to fit perfectly together. It's almost like one of those chipboard kits that you can buy, only you've cut this kit yourself. Oh yeah, we're looking good. So I'm going to disassemble it so that we can move on to the next phase. And that is adding what I'm referring to as the overlays. These are going to add layers of complexity and depth to the piece. Now, this is the headboard overlay for the interior. And you can tell that because it's sized so that the construction slots are exposed on the edges and the bottom of the panel is blank because that's where the mattress will be covering it. On the exterior of the headboard, we have these base panels. And then on top of the base go the exterior overlays. So we've got a lot of layers going on here and some opportunity for metal leafing to shine through. If you'd like to do that, it can be helpful to sort of map out the areas where you'll want to apply adhesive size and then metal leaf. I'm just using the overlays like a stencil to help me determine where I want to apply adhesive size. And then I just paint the size directly onto the hardened chipboard in all the areas that I know will be exposed by the overlay layers. I let the size cure 
and then apply metal leaf. And I'm following the same process for the footboard and the side rails. Applying metal leaf wherever I want it to peek through the cutaways in the upper layers. The headboard is the only piece in the entire construction that has overlays on both the interior and the exterior surfaces. So take care to consult the PDF guide to help you determine the exact placement of each of the layers for your headboard. Here we are layering together the interior overlay and applying it on top of the support. Now we're on the exterior and we're applying the exterior overlay panels to each other to create a double thickness and then laying that in place over the base layer. And now you can see all of that metal leaf peeking through. We're following a very similar procedure for the footboard, only the footboard is not quite as complex. It only has overlays on the exterior side. There, everything is coming together beautifully. Now for the side rails, we have base layers that go over the original supports and metal leafing has been applied to specific areas of the base layers and to the support layers so that that gold tone can shine through all of the various overlays. There we go, both side rails the footboard and the headboard are now complete. Every time new layers get added, it's important to pause and do a dry fit. After all, you're not a machine and perfection is just not a human quality. So stop and verify that everything's fitting together at each stage of the process. These outer corners are engineered so that they will close completely and hide all of the edges of the construction tabs. Once you've verified that we're on track, it's time to apply the hardening process to all of the layers of cardstock that you've just added in the form of overlays. Combining the delicacy of the patterns that are possible using the Cricut Maker with the hardening process of super glue makes it possible to enjoy these ornate patterns created from paper and chipboard. It's amazing. It really will feel like a piece that has been created from solid wood. I love the rich wood tones that are created by adding super glue onto the surface of the chipboard, but I want to deepen the contrast between the main material and the metal leafing that we've applied. So I'm coming over the top with an ebony furniture stain. Now this is an oil-based product, so I'm wearing protective gloves and I'll clean up using mineral spirits. A bit of subtle aging is being added to the brilliant canopy using the same ebony stain. And then once the stain has had a chance to dry, I'm coming back over the top with an emery board and applying a bit more distressing before wiping everything clean. Before final assembly, I wanted to call your attention to the series of holes that are part of each of the overlay panels. These holes were intentionally sized so that you can embed two and a half millimeter rhinestones inside of them. So they act like little bezels. 
This way you don't have to worry about placing your rhinestones correctly. You can just apply a little bit of adhesive. In my case, I'm using triple thick gloss glaze as an adhesive and then tucking little glass rhinestones into each of the tiny holes. I just love the subtle gleam that that provides and the way that it offsets the gleam of the metal leaf. Now that the finishes are complete, it's time for another dry fit. And then if all goes according to plan, we can glue it in place. For this, I'm using Fabri-Tac and holding the panels in place temporarily with one, two, three blocks just to keep everything square and true. Now Fabri-Tac is a little bit messy and there will be some squeeze out here, but I can clean it up either while it's still wet by simply wiping it away with a finger or waiting until it's completely cured and then rubbing it away like an old bit of contact cement. It's important to make certain that the corners all fit together the way they were intended to. So those tabs and slots along each edge must fit one inside of the other in order for everything to align the way it needs to and so that the canopy will balance on top. You can, of course, glue the canopy in place, but I've chosen to leave mine loose so that I can remove it and further embellish the surfaces of this bed and add bed hangings at a later date. Designing this beautifully majestic Gothic four poster bed has been a labor of love from beginning to end and it's with great pride and happiness that I offer this pattern as my very first product in the Thicket Works Studio Etsy shop. I will of course continue to offer free SVG files and printables from time to time for all of my subscribers but I've discovered a passion for designing three-dimensional objects using the Cricut Maker, and that means creating sophisticated cut files, the kind of sophisticated files that take days and sometimes longer to develop. I take it seriously, I want to become extremely good at it, and I hope that from time to time you'll consider purchasing one of my offerings. I promise they'll always be the very best of which I'm capable. Thank you, as always, for the gift of your time and attention today. Until next time, bye.